Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's March 17th, happy St. Patrick's Day. And today we're gonna to take a look at this system sliding through the Pacific Northwest here this morning. Then we have a stronger frontal system on its heels that's gonna move through Friday night with some pretty cold air behind it aloft that's gonna move over the area on Saturday. You can see that here on the infrared satellite imagery. That's gonna give us a thunderstorm chance across the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a look at that in some detail. We'll also take a look at the rest of the country here in a moment. Severe weather season is ramping up across Tornado Alley and down through the southeast. There's a severe weather threat today, and that extends on into next week. It's a very powerful system. Looks like it's going to move through Texas on Monday. Take a brief look at that as well. So here we are looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can see, of course, the western portions of Washington and Oregon are mainly socked in today. You don't need me to tell you that. You can see some contrails in there casting shadows across the sunny skies of some portions of eastern Washington today. thought that was an interesting feature there. Saw some Kelvin Hemholtz moving across the Puget Sound this morning, too. On, you can check that out on Twitter. So checking out the weather across the rest of the country today, you can see winter weather advisories and concerns across central portions of the country Fire danger there through West Texas. We do have severe weather concerns here through Louisiana, Texas, and Oklahoma today. We'll take a brief look at that. But you can see the rest of the country is relatively quiet, especially the East Coast right now. Here's that severe threat. You can see mainly a hail threat there through Oklahoma City down into Texas. Um, potential for some two plus inch hail through there. I know a lot of chasers will be out there looking for those giant hailstones. Maybe even catch a rogue tornado in that higher tornado threat down towards Louisiana and New Orleans today. So heads up if you've got any concerns down there or are traveling. Here's day two. You can see that severe concern push off to the east. Day three as it starts to get towards the east coast. And taking a look out into the future a little bit more, day five for eastern Texas looks like a pretty dynamic system. You have a pretty powerful low drop into uh, West Texas and New Mexico and allow for ample moisture return in front of this from the Gulf of Mexico. Some really strong winds shearing over the top of that. And so there's, they're already talking about some potential for strong tornadoes that area. So heads up if you're traveling or you have anybody living out there in East Texas. I may be out there chasing, so watch out for my live streams. I'll let you guys know how that goes the next couple of days. And then you see day six, this push on into Louisiana, Mississippi, and then push off towards the Florida Panhandle in the southeast there. So severe weather is ramping up across the central portions of the country, south central portions of the country down in the southeast. It is that time of year, folks. And we have this low pressure system that would drop down in there Monday. Just wanted to show you the system here really quick. And then you can see these 5,000 foot winds, really impressive low level jet stream, just bringing in huge amounts of moisture and this big wind shear over this deep moisture would you know, give rise to some potentially strong tornadoes through this area. So heads up if you have concerns down there. And this kind of shows that instability and this convection taking advantage of that instability here. This would be Monday evening through central portions of Texas. This really just kind of shows you the dry line and these setups that happen through Tornado Alley are very unique to this part of the, the world, really. We get setups like nobody else across the planet, really. This really rich moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico just gives great fuel to these severe storms. Back to the Pacific Northwest here, you can see we have considerable avalanche danger for most areas of the western slopes. They actually only have moderate for Stevens, but... If you're going to the backcountry today, definitely have a heads up. Check out the site, Northwest Avalanche Center. Even on the east sides, there is still moderate avalanche danger in the Mount Hood area as well. This site is very good. Highly recommended. Drought monitor came out a couple days ago. Not much has changed. Washington is doing better in the east versus last year, so that's good. But we still need help for Oregon there. And you can see the exceptional drought has been dropped for Montana, which is a good thing. they got some pretty good snowfalls going on out there. And some more systems will likely help that. So now taking a look at the system moving through today, you can see it's a, it's a fairly weak front, just some light precipitation amounts for Puget Sound, but it's going to keep it cloudy. We'll add to the snowfall totals there for the Cascades, some parts of the Rockies into Montana. Then you can see the system approaching Friday evening here, bringing some snow to the mountains and maybe a convergent zone behind it a bit here Saturday morning. And then we get some pretty chilly air aloft coming in behind this on Saturday. We're going to take a look at some lightning potential with that as well. Here is the NAM showing 10,000 foot temperatures. If you look closely, you can kind of see this weak system moving through here, this very weak frontal system going through the area. And then here comes Friday's front here and check out this loba cold air, much colder moving over the region here. So this is what's going to bring us our thunderstorm potential across portions of the Northwest here. Now this 
we are looking at the NAM 3KM. This is CAPE. So we're going to watch this roll through here. There was today's system briefly brought some instability. And then Friday, you know, that's just kind of with the frontal system. We shouldn't get thunderstorms with that. But then as we look on in, into Saturday, notice the area kind of fill in with this convective available potential energy across the region here, mainly Washington, probably into portions of northern Oregon as well, though, too. Can't rule out some lightning activity into eastern Washington as well. As that last round, we had, you know, we had several thunderstorms going through a, a couple of days ago through eastern Washington. Some of them were pretty strong as well. And we had several thunderstorms going on through the Puget Sound. Not that dissimilar this time around. Now, here's the European showing that 5,000, this is 850 millibars, 5,000 feet. You can see the system coming here with this huge lobe of cold air moving into the area here. And it gets pretty established by Saturday afternoon. It's going to bring some good snowfall to the higher terrain, too. We'll look at some snowfall amounts here in a moment. This is for Saturday. So you can see this lightning flash density kind of targeting the South Puget Sound here, South King County, and even the Seattle Metro out towards Kitsap Peninsula. So we're going to have to watch this as it rolls through here. And let's see how long that hangs out. So you can see it hangs out. You can see some of this lightning potential going on through the afternoon here too. So yeah, we might get another round of thunderstorms here on Saturday, as you can see through the Puget Sound and even a little bit showing up there for Northeast Oregon, Idaho border there. Maybe even down towards Portland, you might get a thunderstorm down there as well. So checking out snowfall totals now. This is Kuchera ratio. This is total snowfall amounts. You can see as we go into Saturday, those amounts start to pick up pretty good into Saturday evening. Look at the coastal range of bc getting some pretty good amounts vancouver island even the olympics getting on it all the way down through the sierras eventually and then the rocky mountains of british columbia and montana get some pretty good amounts so this is good for drought concerns out to the west doesn't really help eastern washington that much this round but anything helps especially a little bit of snow showing up on the east slopes of the cascades there for oregon which would help their drought concerns as well so here is let's do last night's european run here and this is the control ensemble. You can see the weak system moving through Washington, Oregon, British Columbia today. And you see that severe threat exist out through the southeast here. Um, then the frontal system rolls through Friday night into early Saturday morning. Then the very cold air aloft, that westerly flow, it's going to bring our good snowfalls. And then another system comes through on Monday. And then it looks like some ridging tries to take place there. But a weak system still goes through BC on into Wednesday. And you can see these systems trying to get in here. And then as we go in further in, into next weekend, you can see another system impacting Pacific Northwest. And then it looks like we go back to the trophy Gulf of Alaska look and almost an another atmospheric river look out here in the extended. But we're, we're getting so far out now that we don't really need to worry about that. It's just something to keep in the back of your mind that this is a La Nina winter and these troughs are going to try to set up all the way through spring. These springs tend to be pretty chilly here for the Pacific Northwest in La Nina years. Here is 10,000 foot temperatures. Just wanted to show you guys that lobe. Here it goes rolling through the Gulf of Alaska. And this is Saturday morning now. And you can see this cold air really entrench over the region here by Sunday morning, bringing good mountain snows and perhaps a thunderstorm on Saturday afternoon. Now here we're looking at last night's control run. This is 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. This is kind of showing the general troughs and ridges of the area here. And you can see that weak system move through today. Stronger system Friday night into Saturday move through. Then that ridging starts up. And this the models have been waffling back and forth on this because some of these runs have this ridge flattening out or getting kicked out really quickly. There's that system that kind of brushes BC on in through Wednesday. So if there's any change in this can really hamper what kind of temperatures we could see across the Pacific Northwest. We'll look at some of the temperatures we're expecting here in a moment. And then you can see the next system finally break that ridge down into next weekend. Then the big trough coming across the West Coast again. And Gulf of Alaska trough gets reestablished into the extended. And this would line up with what La Nina winters typically bring or La Nina springs, I should say. So that's why I you know, this is probably not far-fetched to have this trophy in return here at the end of March. This is this is the most recent. So let's just take a look at this 90 hours out. You see the frontal system move through, and then the ridge starts to build by Tuesday. So maybe we'll get a break here for a couple of days. Hard to say still, though. Like I said, the model's been waffling back and forth just how long. 
they keep this ridge around some of them had it being flattened out initially some of the some of them are just kicking it out pretty quickly so we'll see how that goes this is the gfs let's compare this was the 06 run so late last night this came out there goes the friday decent frontal system through the area and the colder air would move in behind that and then it shows systems kind of brushing the area the ridge builds a bit but there is still some systems diving down through into british columbia here and then as we go into the extent of the gfs you can see that gulf of alaska troughing start to get reestablished there and bring some systems towards pacific northwest once again potentially some stronger ones even but this is getting way out into fantasy land but the main point being that this does agree with the european that gulf of alaska troughing returning in the extended which is kind of in line with the la nina spring now looking into what temperatures we can expect check out saturday or check out SeaTac tacoma international airport tuesday and wednesday uh, Saturday, pretty chilly here as you see this cold air move through the region, but then the potential ridging building in behind it for a couple days. Pretty normal for this time of year, but no extended warm period coming up. It doesn't look like right now. And we're going to have to see just how these temperatures line up. This is a pretty warm day on Wednesday there, up towards 70 degrees for Seattle. But then you can see it cool off behind that. But then again, th this is this could be pretty fickle here coming up the next few days of the models. We'll have to see how this ridge develops and see if any systems break it down early. Now looking at, this is the national blend of models here, and you can see that warm up period shown here also Tuesday and Wednesday. So again, we'll have to watch this ridge and see how it sets up. We might get a couple nice next uh, days next week. And you can see that chilly air that moves over the region Saturday into Sunday. That's going to bring that mountain snow and the thunderstorm potential for Saturday. So, yeah, we're supposed to be in the low to mid 50s around this time of year. Then it looks so it kind of goes back towards climatology at the end of the period here. This is Seattle Tacoma six hour max wind gusts. And you can see there are a smattering of some higher wind speeds showing up here off into the extended. This was when the Gulf of Alaska troughing would get reestablished here. So we'll just have to watch out for the extended. Always something to look for here in springtime. But you can see no big winds expected until then. You can see the lighter wind uh, generally around when that ridging would be taking and setting up residents near the Pacific Northwest here. And here is looking on into the end of March as far as precipitation values. You can see the system coming through this weekend and then the next one here on Monday and into Tuesday morning. Then there's that bri that ridge there. You can see kind of that general uh, signal for some drier weather. Mm -hmm. Then the Gulf of Alaska troughing returning here. So you can see the control of pretty rainy here in some of these scenarios here as we go on into the future. So anyway, that's what we got for you today. A little bit of light rain, then the frontal system tomorrow, colder air on Saturday, thunderstorm potential across a lot of the Pacific Northwest, and then another system early next week. Then some potential ridging with some potential warmer temperatures next week. I'll be watching that closely. I'll watch to see how this ridge develops and see if any systems flatten it out or kick that ridge out too soon, or maybe the ridge will even build up a little bit more and we'll get maybe even three days nice next week. So... Yeah, watch out that severe weather if you're traveling off to the east. And otherwise, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.